Uh, Ron Silliman has been a friend and colleague since 1977. So my introduction today is colored by decades of almost continuous appreciation for his brilliant person and formative poetry and criticism. Of all the ways I might speak about his work, I want to discuss questions first. In 1977, Roof Magazine published Sunset Debris, 50 pages of questions with no answers. Now I see he's going to read Parrot Eyes Lust today, which will be published in the Paris Review later this year. In that piece, he continues his questions of commodities, of things, of language things, and almost things that we cannot point to that we fetishize. But now there's elucidation of those questions. The question is whether we can increase our value to the community by writing poetry. Silliman has always had an edge, partly because of the way his body challenges him, partly because he is part of the generation of poets that was more concerned with speaking the truth than with avoiding pain to others. Of course, that focus has changed for the new generation of poets writing today, but Ron adheres to his insistence on what he says in Parrot Eyes Lust, quote, me, I just tend to blurt things out. Or his critique of Buddhist cant, first berry, best berry. Now that one is true. Or his politics, quote, Angela Davis' innocence was always inscribed absolutely by the fact that the guns Jonathan Jackson stole from the Che Lumumba Club safe house had been registered in her name. Innocence, though in his method, in that he continues to give his work to us without a thought for the usual tit for tat compensation. I think the word I'm looking for is generous. And those of you who know me know that's high praise. In the parrot's mode, quote, sentences dangling in midair speaks to the difficulty we all have in making connections, a method in itself that Ron no longer leaves in midair as with his new sentence, another book Roof published. In his latest work, he insists on connections of specific types, explanatory, such as, quote, Davis as an undergraduate studied at the Sorbonne, I got a job with Pacific Gas and Electric, or spatial, such as, in the back a string of oaks in an utterly straight line, I hear the alarm clock one story up. In space, like Grenier, narrative, such as, quote, what I can't stop seeing is the force with which that day, early in 89, the anesthesiologist shoved the surgeon, hollering that I had a right to a second opinion, meaning I better damn well use it, which I did, which in turn saved her life, but just barely. All these connections and their specificity make Ron's new work about his surroundings in a way that I ascribe to his realization that our interactions and the connections through which they flow are diverse and nameable. When Ron takes responsibility, he's reading the current political poetical moment when we're not just elucidating, but trying to actively improve it with poetry. This is not only idealism, it's activism, poetry as activism. Now that's an achievement. Ron's recent improvements include an expanded reissue of Legend his collaboration with four other roof authors from the original language-centered poetry group. The publication last year of the language letters where the formation of language-centered poetry is revealed as far from blurting. Please welcome the both thoughtful and spontaneous Ron Silliman. This, hang on. Oh, the host unmuted me. I'm not used to having people do that for me. Um, so yes, uh, this is just a one passage from Parrot Eyes Lust. Uh, that's three words. Um, and it will appear in the uh, Paris Review. I haven't even finished typing up this uh, poem in total yet. So uh, there's more to, more to work on here. And it does begin with the question uh, that I think of as, as something that occurs to every one of us every day. Do potatoes suffer? Would it be new with the blue pen? 
This lightweight, futuristic, slightly minimalist black German fountain pen, the Lamy Safari, the alphabet with my name inserted black against red, the same as Caxon's missile. Should I look that up? Constraint, constraint at eight what you think. The ship sinks rather quickly. Why were they sailing so far north? Kate Winslet concedes it isn't her best work. The knife on the counter, blade side up. Where in the word is the theory? Me, I just tend to blurt things out. Editing function at fancy dinner must not be barbarian. Raised by wolves is an insult to wolves. The boy wanders in from the forest which I no longer even remember, except when I look in the mirror and see the animal there. Fancy faux leather carrying case just for the tweezers that inevitably are lost. First berry, best berry. Now that one is true. In the microwave oven, blackberries burst into the oatmeal. What to do? with the tail end of the page. The spine ripples when I open this book. It's April before I try writing on the porch. The wind too cold still, at least at this hour. I come inside, but my son sleeps on the couch. That I no longer call by the word of my youth, a Chesterfield. That whole concept of field of Chesters. Angela Davis's innocence always was inscribed absolutely by the fact that the guns Jonathan Jackson stole from the Che Lumumba Club safe house had been registered in her name. Still that concept, the Che Lumumba Club safe house, is itself worthy of further exploration. Sentences dangling in midair. Davis is an undergraduate, studied at the Sorbonne. I got a job with Pacific Gas and Electric. Registers of class, half a century past. This house at that point, newly built. In the back, a string of oaks in an utterly straight line. I hear the alarm clock one story up outside. The rain is intense, but only for 15 minutes. I stare up from the long desk in the archive, works that I wrote but don't even remember. Dry desert riverbed, but the pond at the end of it indeed has ducks and even three cormorants perched comically on the limbs of a dead tree. The cop and the prowl car is a good-looking blonde, the homeless kid to the beggar in the wheelchair. My name is Fillmore. Pleased to meet you, John. Shut my eyes to sense my breath. Southwest reroutes a replacement aircraft, only to discover the plane is too small. Who one runs into in this resolutely Republican county when reporting for jury duty. For five years, they've nursed this grief, bitterness, rage, the death of their daughter, just two days old, the beautiful but beleaguered defendant, the crap cafeteria that in theory stops serving half an hour before the judge releases the panel for lunch. What I can't stop seeing is the force with which that day, early in 89, the anesthesiologist shoved the surgeon, hollering that I had a right to a second opinion, meaning I better damn well use it, which I did, which in turn saved her life, but just barely. The next five poems, actually the rest of this reading, uh, will come from a cycle that I'm still working on called American Songbook that is um, 
I described it as the son of Vogue from the alphabet in that like Vogue, it's a series of discrete poems that look pretty much like ordinary poems. Uh, and it was an attempt to respond to a problem that I was having, which is that as my nation did horrible things here and there in the world, I was asked to contribute something for this or that publication. And since it always takes me 10 years to get anything written, the, you know, the atrocity was long since past. Fortunately for me, if not for the rest of the planet, uh, George W. Bush and Barack Obama have solved my problem by starting wars that never end, uh, which gives them time to complete things. And since then, I've been doing some other pieces as well. This first one, which is entitled Inscribed on My Pussy Hat, and you can sort of date the poem from that, does have um, a couplet right at the end of it that mentions Milano. And that couplet is lifted directly from Pound's uh, cantos where he describes the fate of uh, uh, his heroes, Benito and Clara. What will they do when they realize that the only way to stop us is to kill us all? They say in Harlan County, there were no Clinton voters there. The unions had long since failed, so they went with the yellow hair. Grace Slick's rough rasp grasps the line when logic sinks to medicine and the prophets have all been bled and kickbacks to the oligarchs yield tiny orders fed to long-legged Eastern escorts reputed to give head. Remember what General Flynn said, not with a bang, but a tweet, not by the head, but the feet from the trees of Milano. Happily, as of today, I, and in fact, you uh, have more followers on Twitter than uh, does Donald Trump. Um, it was a slightly longer piece. Ode beginning with a line by Sean Bonney. Fuck this shit. My lawyer can eat your lawyer over tea at three in a vast dining plaza with chandeliered ceilings plus mirrors where the walls should be. Warren Harding upstairs puking his guts out to no avail because scale is where it's at here on Dealey Plaza. The president's head snapping back as the bullet bursts the brain and this curious slow-mo ballet the future Ms. Onassis performs twisting to flee that moving vehicle until the service of secrets pushes her back off the trunk. Ah, that pillbox hat of history, having seen too much, will tell you very little. I rest my case. Fuck this shit. No source from the 1950s back when the senator and Jackie lived right across the street from Archibald Cox estimates the number of publishing American poets at over 100. Though Poetry Chicago, as folks in those days, those days, loved to call it, prints over seven times that many in that decade alone, and seven of the 12 contributors to the first issue of Yugen, 1958, never once appeared in poetry not even Jack Micheline. Prose arose as an emblem of reading not what was in front of you, but something further back, dreamlike almost, nightmare of the hidden hand carried forward as a headache one can't quite place. Throbby lobby, Augustine's lips, O oh, Gaspard of the night. Fuck this shit. In 1619, we took a little trip across the Middle Passage to pick crops in Mississippi because the calculus of labor demanded a solution 
that wouldn't price the resulting products of spun cotton beyond the means of the hoi polloi, the swells of midtown Manhattan, which in those days meant Gramercy Park, who were thus empowered to outlaw slavery while benefiting from its works. Blow my nose. Fuck this shit. That calculus, three-fifths in the Constitution, was not an estimate of any individual's worth. What, after all, is worth if you can whip, hang, shoot, or fuck it, light it on fire just because you're feeling that way without warning, but was the precise number required to afford the slaving states enough votes to counter any two-thirds majority? And the fix has been in ever since. Fuck this shit. Only one New Yorker signed that document, the Caribbean A. Ham, who am what he am, not what we imagine, the stage more circular than the argument. The question at hand being by which index to gauge the state of the economy. We who are never standard and yet poor, war, a oh war, oh endless war, see what war has done to me. At the laser's red glare, pundits brain on air, give proof through the night that capital's unfair. War, a oh war, oh endless war, see what war has done to me. Fuck this shit. Give tanks that the wall does not fall on our heads. What glows in the dark stows in our beds. Freaking words of wisdom. Let it bleed. Let it bleed. Fuck this shit. What time do the hearings begin? <clears throat> this is called Contrast is Everything. And if you do not know who Artemisia Gentileschi is, I suggest you go and look her up. Her artwork is fabulous. Contrast is everything. We live to fuck and then we sing until the rents force us out. Living on the streets is hard until you figure just which yard is protected from a view. So twist this wire if you can until you've made a little man and he can live here too. He don't say much, but that's his charm, and you won't come to any harm to listen to him, too. If only you had a tent for rain but, and something to ease this pain and possibly a little cane on which to chew. I dream my hands between your legs and then my lips and last my tongue until finally you've begun to arch your back and give a moan just as if we've been sewn together into one. But that's for folks as have a room and a reason for this broom to push the dust out the door, worrying about the score. And if maybe just a little more might not have been too few. Bubbles come and bubbles burst and nothing cures this awful thirst, but like sleep, but first, the man must have his due. The rhyme is wretched and thus it's etched far beyond my capacity to fetch an X that's true. Social distancing from cable news is my Purell. Standing in the welcome center men's room humming happy birthday as I rub frothy hands under a frigid tap. Dude, there's an app for that or a plan, swabbing my nostril all dressed in hazmat. Atticus takes careful aim, a laser dot square on my forehead. Say cheese, Egon Sheila, half starved, dying of the Spanish flu. Walter Benjamin, dying of the Spanish border. Trump's official portrait as done by Artemisia Gentileschi. I probably should mention that uh, one of the figures that's not exactly named uh, in that poem is the Philadelphia Wireman, uh, an unknown street uh, uh, artist. 
who uh, may have been homeless. Uh, his artwork sculptures, uh, very hard uh, wire bent into a figurative shapes was literally found at one point in a vacant lot. And uh, he's now recognized as one of the uh, major outsider artists, but no one knows his name. This next piece, Shelter in Place, is in the January issue of uh, Poetry, uh, page 370, if you have it. Um, Skip Casey um, and Judy Williamson are two people I would dedicate this to. Skip is referred to as the valedictorian, and Judy Williamson was the uh, person who was picked up by the mayor's son. Uh, both of those were classmates of mine at Albany High School in the uh, early 60s. Ishi was an indigenous person, the last member of his tribe, the last speaker of his language, who at the point of starvation finally wandered in from the woods and ended up literally being given, who says slavery doesn't exist, uh, to the anthropologists uh, Krober, both of them were anthropologists at UC Berkeley, and lived out the last of his days in the Berkeley Hills. Holy Hubert was at one point a well-known street preacher and actually is the person I got the idea of reading all of Ketchak uh, from the uh, steps of the Bank of America in San Francisco back in 78 from. Shelter in place. Putting the pox in apocalypse the pudding in the skull has a lemony taste, just a little until you push through to the richer, almost bitter sweetness at the center. Yum is a corporate brand encompassing multiple fast food franchise chains. He marched his coworkers out of the restaurant and into the woods where he shot them. The angel of death ambles in from the memory gardens where it merely needs to brush against the hem of your gown. Goya's peasants against the wall don't look away. When help burst in, all armored up, they found a naked woman alone in the showers but couldn't make out her mumbled song. When this you see, D-E-F, geometry rising to the surface of a hypothetical world in a 13 dimensional space circulating in absence where some sun should be. What time is it in Zaragoza by the old Roman wall? Modernism lurks looking as dated as the gravel garden at the Soviet block apartments. She waits at the corner for the bus to campus when the mayor's son pulls up in his car to offer her a ride from which she is never seen again. The first to commit suicide is the class valedictorian. They rain from the bridge like a festival of ornaments, like the couple holding hands out of the South Tower. No one remembers Ishi in the Berkeley Hills or Lone Cat Fuller's musical contraption, Holy Hubert shouting from a text in which all of the words have been erased. And, and this is called N-word, and that's spelled E-N-W-A-R-D, one word, although it appears in other forms as well in this poem. Oh, something's mentioned in it. Champ and Major are, are German shepherds who on the 20, uh, 21st or 22nd, whenever they get it fumigated, uh, will take up residence in the White House. Hagley Mills was the original site of the DuPont, DuPont business in Wilmington, uh, literally about half a mile from. Uh, uh, the Biden's home. Stuart Hall is a sociologist, and if you don't know his work, you should go look it up. Ephemelu is the name of a character in Americana 
who will be played by Lupita Nyong'o if they ever get the for TV movie made. Um, and there is a reference to a home for a global engagement and that's the Perry World Center, which is right behind me over here behind the fence uh, and is where uh, Joe Biden was teaching um, in the year before he took his time off to run for office. And I have uh, imitated Ray Armentrout here by giving this poem sections and giving them numbers. So, one, so much depends upon the first violin glazed by three oboes beside the white cellist. When the moon hits your brain and it's starting to rain, that's free market land use. Whose father is that asleep on the flattened cardboard box under the convention center awning, blue paper COVID mask gently stirring with his breath? In Guerneville, Silent E, under the bridge, the war in Nam is lost every night. Social distancing at the crack park. George Washington sent the sick all the way to Yellow Springs to keep the troops at the forge from getting infected. Durante sings Dylan. Two, racism predates capitalism, but capital, like the church, puts it to work. My grandfather's great-grandfather signs his name with an X. Out of what bog, on which island, and how begotten by whom? You, meaning me? Like a bed I'd made that I'd see 45. Not him, the year. Scream or screen, which one? Not a beat cop, but a dispatcher. Location, 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 when this you see, GED. Three, N word, N word, as if the language were about to collapse in on itself at the center. Furious perhaps at the idea, what's an idea, of signing a Kenyan to play the Nigerian ephemeru. How Americana is that? how Charlie Jan. Four, it was only a matter of time once the lockdown began before there'd be riots in the streets, whacked plot against the governor of Michigan, a nation designed to fail the marshmallow test. Colorism in India and Africa and New Orleans, all about ultraviolet just like the queens in the back room at Stonewall. Once Buttigieg and Klobuchar pulled out, centrist had nowhere else to go. Which is the donut? Which the cup of coffee? You meaning me? Five, only a matter of time. Eight minutes, 46 seconds, calculated at the base of the neck. It was capitalist who heard the whole phrase, workers of the world, a home for global engagement. Power invariably lies elsewhere, like mercury sliding under the door. White people, no such thing. McKay and Marseille say, hey, you meaning me? The essence of a demand is that it cannot be met. Defund the police, bad cop, no donut. Six, race is the modality through which class is experienced, Stuart Hall. No woman in the family, no women in the family were permitted to drive, to learn how to drive until my grandfather died. My aunt understood class abandonment, marrying a real estate developer her father's age, becoming a school librarian, living out where transit simply didn't exist. The last recipient of the Civil War Widows and Orphans Fund did not die until 2020. Time stretched as though over a drumhead. 
I did not understand until I was 10 that the N-word was something people would have feelings over, that it wasn't in fact polite. Albany was not carved out initially to trigger spatial segregation, though that's what it became, but because the dynamite works feared codes in a municipality whose core voting block might be university faculty. Hagley Creek, but a tributary of the Brandywine, where they called it earlier iteration of that same process, gunpowder mills, three-sided brick buildings, so the body parts would blow out over the water. You can hear champ and major barking. When this you see, PTSD, seven. I can see clearly now my brain is gone. I can see all grand juries in my way. Money laundered before the dawn is gonna pay for the DACA where I'll stay. Oceans were a curse. Who speaks of the great Belgian novel or the French frontier? We, on the other hand, plowed west, killing everything in our path. Tombstone, Arizona. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. That was wonderful. Now let's take a five minute intermission during which we'll ask you to donate $5 to the readers. And please remember that all donations go to pay the poets so your friends, the readers, will be able to buy themselves a drink or a cup of tea or whatever suits them. So uh, we'll put up this, the, uh, the information for donations and be back in five minutes. Welcome back and thank you for all your donations. As always, all contributions to the Segway reading series go directly to Pay the Poets. So please donate $5 if you haven't already. Um, we'll give you another chance to do so at the end of the program and Izzy will put up the, uh, the uh, placard so you'll know what to do. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome Tonya Foster back to Segway. Some of you may not know that earlier in her career, she curated two seasons of the Segway reading series um, at the Zinc Bar. So Segway is honored by her successes in her poetry, editing, her critical work on visual art. And I must mention this beautiful and frank swarm of bees in the high court. Is that clear? Can everybody see that? Look at that gorgeous book. And I will say that what's inside it is equally stupendous. In the work Tonya sent me, some of which she'll read today, I found, somewhat to my surprise, a polymorphous identity. While many writers think of voice as coming from self in a monadic way, Tonya Foster's poetry picks up material and voice from her surroundings like a boulevardier. A woman speaks from the corner of a room. The sound of a ball slaps on a hard court. She, insomnium dramas, gets chased around the block by rabid white dogs. You see the range of her humanity, but her field poetry is more than collage. She weaves material together into a single style, a style composed even to the point, as she says in preamble, to quote, fancify a nothing, go straight for an inaccuracy, that distracts and passes time. That's pretty brave. Then she gets to politics. After waving at the bus tour of Harlem passing by, she writes cartoonishly about race, dreaming of, quote, running around on random corners with a spear to make a spectacle of my own. And then in the same paragraph, she shifts to a language centered adjacency, quote, gunplay, an undignified beatdown, Memorized, memorized, and then she explains her position on style. Quote, only after taking in my mother's landscape was speech possible. At first, 
there was mimicry. Language as mirror and echo. Am, am, let, am I? Mama tell, am I? I am let, am, am, I'm a tell, mama. These mixed modes build into an inclusive style of diverse styles, which I have to say from my own point of view reads environmentally. A style of multiple discourses by which I mean you don't have to write about birds to be writing about human nature. From another point of view, addressing her gender, Foster makes an unusual formulation using the, un using the frequented pronouns, quote, a we female joins in the cathexis of nation on that side of the southern borders, a they, a female, they gathers in supplication in application to the cathexis of nation. Here, Tonya allows the a disagreement in grammar of, quote, we joins to ensure general consent in the social body. And, and she hopes, quote, this rendering will save the we we think we are. Do we have to change how we think about ourselves for racial, gender, economic, and environmental justices to be realized? I suggest Tanya Foster is showing us a way to those justices. So please give a visual clap to Tonya Foster. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you very much for that invitation. And I very much, you know, I loved, um, I loved curating Segway. That was a lot of fun. Um, and somehow I thought it was longer than two sessions because we were, we were also at the Bowery Poetry Club. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I'm so glad that you're here. And I, I thought I would start by reading um, two pieces that are not quite poems. They're just thoughts. Um, one, march like the soldier through the sonic insistence of breath. Breathe in the minute, in the moment, breathe, breathe. Breathe, body rest. Body rest away the rest, then breathe. Breathe. Body rest, body rested. Body resting and as in recline. Body rest, body rested. Body politic is as decline. Body rests in each breath. Body rests in each breath we take. Bodies rest in each breath taken by the body politics, restless decline. Body rest in the sonic soothing of your saying. Body rested from its resting in the sonic insistence of our isness. Move through by moving as an unmarshaled we. Two, but if I love you, what we are is of consequence each to the morning, each to the afternoon and to the evenings retire. But if I love you, time is immeasurable and irrelevant. There is no easy accounting of the train's arrival, of the ship's docking arrival and its possibility, arrival and its possibility are verdant present joys. But if I love you, you are not drawn as another, conscripted in the agonies of marketed brands. But if I love you, you are not me. And we dance along incongruous and broken roadways. But if I love you, I will love many in the multiple that I am and that I love. Um, so I'm here, I'm now in Oakland as opposed to San Francisco. And I'm learning through very, about various land acknowledgements. Um, I'm on land that is being gentrified um, right now, um, is 
West Oakland is a Black community or was, has a history of being a Black community. And before that, it was the land of the Ohlone, the unceded land of the Ohlone people. Um, I'm learning about the place that I am. Um, but even as I learn and write about the place that I am, I'm also um, always writing about the place that I'm from, New Orleans. Um, this poem that I'm calling a poem um, is called After the Call. And it's a poem for my cousin Randy, uh, who passed last year. One. Hello, you say, and your voice is ghost of your voice as I recall. An abrupt sigh, a leave taking of breath among breaths. Don't go, I want to simply say. Instead, I say I love you. Two, remember, death is not the arbiter of this life. And among a calculus of shadows, we laugh. Our singular selves cascading seas towards the waters, encompassing. We laugh to keep from dying at the dinner table, to keep from dying on the stoop, to keep from dying in the cell, to keep from dying in the street, to keep from dying on the sidewalk, to keep from dying on the asphalt. This life costs all that we can bear we laugh to keep. Three, perhaps. Perhaps this, perhaps this is, perhaps this is a semantic situating. These are the sentences to which we are bound. They situate love in the everly of being, being in the long after of the great dying, being in the of of the Holocene, being in the cathexis of petty and petulant tyrants. Or, and what is this poem? And what in this poem is repetition? And what in this poem is repetition but uncertainty? And what in this poem is repetition but the certainty of syllable? And what in this poem is this repetition? but a minting in the ear and the mind of the music of your isness in all this leave-taking love. Um, the next piece, this is from um, uh, something I've been writing for a long time called A Mathematics of Chaos. Um, and it's very much, it moves between poetry and prose and is, New Orleans is all up in it. Water like language, like water, like language, like water, like language, like otters, like language, like daughters, like otters, like licking, like lapping language wagons, waters. Water like language, like water, like language, like water, like language, like otters, like language, like daughters, like otters, like licking, like lapping language wagons, waters. Water like language, like water, like language, like water, like language, like otters, like language like daughters, like otters, like licking, like lapping, language wagons, waters, water like language, like water, like language, like water, like language, like otters, like language, like daughters, like otters, like licking, like lapping, language wagons, waters. Aside, avoid the dangerous natives and their struggles for survival. Shoot if in fear of death by drowning they attempt to cross into neighboring Gretna. You're not going to have here like you have New Orleans. And to have is to hold, is to own. Aside you, note the double-decker bus tours through Harlem. I wave, dream of running around on random corners with a spear to make the spectacle my own. However, I suspect that this may not be read as respectable. The unrespectable, the unrespectable spectacle my mother would roundly disapprove and laugh. 
concern? Would my gentle play be mistaken for hostility, gunplay, an undignified beatdown, memorexed or memorized? Perhaps if there were a group of us who registered to perform, that would alleviate fear. Spook and word, legalized. Aside, toi. Note which near New Orleans parishes pimp themselves as the new New Orleans, and new is still the modernist better, and pimping is still a thumping on the chest, like old King Kong, a self-assertion and assurance. Aside on fall, display, display of bodies and bags, display, display of wuzzes and wills. The native is the attraction. The native is the threat. The thrill that goes will come again if we cordon off our little bête noire in language, in landscape, in scape. In language, in landscape, in scape. In only after taking in my mother language, along with the voices of that place, a girl who looks like her father is born for luck. Alcohol, Algiers, alligator, amazing grace, Amelia, Angola, Atchafalaya, Aunt Noni, and sister Azarine, back of town, by you, because her daddy died or left because the firstborn baby died. Beignets, bitch, butsy, cafe au lait, Calio projects, Canal Street, Cardella, cast iron, catching coconuts, catching scents, Kaya, Clio Street, cockroaches, comb them kitchens, Congo Square, cornbread, courtyard, cousins, CPT, crawfish, Creole, dark skin, daughters, dead end, desire, desire projects, desire unmet is desire multiplied, dirty rice, Dorothy, Elysian Fields, you Ray told you, um, a tooth, I can't even say it. Etufe, that's so weird. Uterp, Ezekiel, Father John's filet, firstborn, firstborn, done died, fleur de lis, flood for true. Front porch, Galvez, Girt Town, give me some. Girl, give me got shot, get up in here. God don't like ugly. Good hair, grandma, grandpa, grandpa done lost his mind. Grief, grief grown rooted and wild. Hard headed, hard hearted, her mouth don't know no Sunday. High yellow. Holy Ghost, hoodoo, how sweet the sound. How y'all doing? How your mom and them? I, 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 I ain't playing what you know. Jambalaya, jazz, jump back, jump rope. Katie, kick back, kick your ass. Kitchens, kitchens on your neck, knickknacks, Kool-Aid, lanyap, lakefront left. Levy, leveraging, light-skinned, lighter than a paper bag. Louis, St. Louis, Louis the 14th, my bell, my dear, magnolias, make groceries. Martin Luther King Boulevard, Melpamine, Melpamine Projects, Memory, Mental Ward, Mississippi, Mississippi Bridge, Mississippi River, Miss Myrtle, Miss Tit, Moriel, Morning, Mosquitoes, Morning, Mudbog, Mufal. Mufalada, nappy headed, neck bone, neutral ground, neutral ratch, nobody like a bone but a dog. NOPD, not luck enough to keep a body strong. Okra gumbo out front of town, oysters, pecans, pickled pig's lips, piss po, po boys, porch monkeys, potholes, quadroons, quarter, quiet, rain, rain through the living room windows, red beans, red bones, Reverend Prophet, rice, river, 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 rue, rue, saint, sedity, sassafras, sachimo, screen door, semen, seventh ward, snowball, speak the word to me, spit on the broom to stay out of jail. St. Charles Avenue, Stronger Hope Baptist Church, Superdome, Swamp, Tambourine, Chapatulas, Tender Headed, Tender Hearted, Tenderoni, Terpesqua, Thought. Throw me something, mister. Tipitinas, trouble don't last always. Uppity, vagina, Virginia, voodoo, wade, wade in the water, water, wishes. Wishes go the way of sweepstakes. Where you at? Where you're from? Woman, wrought iron. Your ma, your pa, your greasy, greasy grandma. You, 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 you ain't nothing. You thought like Aunt Hannah who thought cat shit was banana. Xavier, Zataran, Zulu, Zydeco. Amen. 
Only after taking in my mother landscape was speech possible. At first there was is mimicry, language as mirror and echo. Am, am, let, am I? Mama tell, am I? I am let, am, am, I'm a tell mama. Um, this next piece is from a manuscript in progress and it's called thingification and thingification is um, the sort of transformation of life of living into this thing right it's a term from that I learned of from um, a book by Aimé Césaire, Discourse on Colonialism. And so I'm just kind of thinking through some things, I guess. Um, so, huh. I'll start at number two. Think of Frederick Douglass of the name Frederick Douglass, signaling a particular biological entity, of the idea Frederick Douglass, of the historical discourse that says there was a Frederick Douglass, that there was the Frederick Douglass, figured historically and rhetorically. Three, think of the epiphany of its occurrence. There is an epiphanic moment in the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass when Douglass realizes that he must learn to read if he is to be free, or at least if he's to understand his enslavement and his owner's freedom. I think of that epiphany, epiphany in narrative, and I try to imagine the epiphanic feeling in the body of the enslaved boy remembered by the self-emancipated man who had the most photographed face of the 19th century and who authored and revised and revisited the text that I am reading. Something of the boy is ghost to the purposes of the man. Some secret life of the boy is amplified. Something of the man is mythic, a bit beyond our technologies, that yet thereby shaped. Four, the epiphany occurs in the text, in the reading of the text, in the mind of the man writing and remembering the boy realizing. This epiphany occurs across temporal realms, is refracted through different bodies. This is a collection and a recollection. Five, the boy Frederick's reading of his situation precedes his ability to read books. It is almost the start of his emancipation, almost. Six, there is a later epiphany in narrative where Douglas, a young man, decides, refuses to ever be beaten again. Of that moment, the elder Frederick claims to have realized a preference for death to taking a beating from any man. Seven, in the narrative, shortly before this decisive moment of preferring death in the story, young man Douglas had begun wearing High John the Conqueror root. Oh, John the Conqueror, conquer my grief on his right or left side, I can't recall which. He's a young man when this happens, and it's a very macho moment, this meeting of violence with violence, apparently effective. Douglas describes his physical response as unintentional. He catches Mr. Covey and himself as he understands himself off guard. Sadly for him, his body could not resist the beatings. According to Douglas, though he would for another four years remain a slave in form, he would never again be a slave in fact. The deviant of the man is the man, or the demeaned woman, depending. 7a, a slave in form. The word form is from the 13th century old French forme, meaning physical form, appearance, shape, image. In this definition, the exterior is prefaced. What we humans are able to perceive. Eight, 
a woman pushes a child in all appearances, not her own in a stroller down Broadway near 79th. I see them and would never ask about what their appearances don't reveal. They are an image, an imago of mother and child with all the attendant meanings. The woman's purpose in this image seems apparent, a parent. The deviant of the mother is the mama or the mammy, is the Jezebel, is the bitch, is the slut a slave in form. 13th century France. These are the days of the serfs. Historians wonder whether serfs from the Latin service, which at some point meant slave in the new meaning of the word, wonder if serfs were primarily the ameliorated descendants of slaves or whether they constituted a new group of people and their descendants people who entered a commended or commended themselves voluntarily into debasing but not slavish dependency, ostensibly for protection in unsettled political conditions. What political and social conditions condition voluntary? Douglas became, he claims, a man in that moment saw revived in himself a sense of his own manhood. This is 19th century America, and the claim that a three-fifths human human could articulate his manhood both physically and semantically was both revolutionary and naive. How many other male slaves had had enough and for a moment felt incapable? Now, how far from the will is incapacity of controlling the impulse to defend and protect themselves? How many fought back and survived? Certainly many more than have written about the experiences. After all, the slave, though far from prized, was to be maintained, minimally kept up, kept going for his, her body, and her, his labor were relatively expensive sources of profit. So I'm gonna stop. This kind of goes on, it goes back to New Orleans, it goes to contemporary slavery. Um, I'd like to end with um, uh, a history of the bitch, actually, um, or a poem from that, I guess. And um, this is called Testimonial Testify. For a time in some places only men could testify. Testify rooted with testes, testicles, tongue tied to crouch, crotch, talk of truth as biology. Biblical Abraham had his servant swear a solid, put your hand under my thigh and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth. Biblical Israel, now if I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Oaths by issue. Banker Stanley, husband of Rachel, testifies that he and his family have lived on Newton's Mill Street for 20 years. Newton's already 339 years when Stanley and Rachel move there. T is three years old, toddling 1,500 miles south in a New Orleans shotgun on Malpamine Street. Nola is 251 years old then. It's 1969, year of the rooster, when Stanley and Rachel move, begin perhaps a family in that neighborhood of homes, of expansive and expensive empty lawns the eyes yawn across, luxuriant space. T, in the tight shotgun, Tiny has begun to collect language, words roll, rumble in her tender toddler's mouth ears forming mind. Boisterous for a young one, 
She is loud when she laughs, when she sings, when she searches her mama, daddy, grandma, cousins faces, searches for the train her father tucks beneath her grandparents front room bed for safekeeping and cramped quarters. In dreams, years later, T will recall reaching into that darkness as clearly as she recollects the kitchen stove, the unseemly window fan pulling air through the narrow back lot, the orange sofa bed, the single bath. She will recall this darkness as tender as a fear she didn't know. 1969 in the hollow scene. Like tea, the Black Panther Party, miles from certain Newton luxuries, 3,085, miles from the New Orleans mouth of the Mississippi, 2,263, is just three years old. Oakland's BPP begins to feed daily little ones like tea. At three, they all remap worlds, take in words, recollate sentences meant to contain and constrain them, remarking ourselves in syllabic struts. The languages we speak speak us into place and roll. Refuse, roll away the stones, words that hem and haw us in. That means I have a minute left. 1969 in the Holocene. Say the FBI director says that without question, the greatest threat to the internal security of the country is the Black Panther Party. Who's a nation in this claim? Whose internals are breached by the feeding of children as young as ones living in Southern shotguns? Who are the invasive free radicals ravaging wholeness in the thicket of the nation's hood and its hooded surveillance of love expressed by filling hungry mouths? Who that, who that surveying and saying? Years later, one who's come lately will say as she explains to him what's happened, calm down, stop crying, as though her tears were invalid testimony of what done gone, gone down. Who can believe tears while carrying shotguns? Thank you. Thank you, Tonya. That was wonderful. And thank you, Ron. And I'd also like to thank um, Izzy Dow, our technical director. Izzy, you should take a bow. Um, and thanks to Artist Space as well.